Are you struggling to connect cleanly with the ball in various situations on the field? Are your shots like welcome pass backs the goalie can control with his feet? Or perhaps, maybe you sometimes hit an absolute worldie, but you have no idea how you did it, and doing it again just kind of feels impossible. Well, in today's video, we'll discuss some of the simple concepts that aim to draw out the very best from your already established technique, even if you're just starting out. I'll show you how foot placement can be the difference between a low dribble of a shot and a cracking top bin's effort. We'll discuss how the angle of your body might be the wrong angle for the type of strike you're attempting. And finally, dive into two simple adjustments that you can make today that might make all the difference for when you're next striking the ball. So let's get into it. First up, the run up. Scrap that, let's call this momentum. Now we're gonna talk about traveling with the ball for today. Not because from a static position isn't important, but because in reality, we find ourselves traveling with the ball way more than anything else. Plus it's sometimes harder to generate power. So if we can do it whilst traveling with the ball, then we'll certainly be able to do it from all other variables that will come our way. All right, momentum. So whether we're getting the ball out of our feet like Coutinho or moving onto the ball like company, the momentum of the ball is moving away from us. And that's important to understand because knowing that lets us know where to place our standing leg. The goal for where to place the standing leg is to have it in line with the ball when you make contact with the ball. And this goes for almost all striking techniques. So if you're traveling with the ball, we're gonna place the standing leg slightly ahead of that moving ball so that when our shooting leg comes through, the ball has had time to catch up, resulting in this, in line with the standing leg. Pretty cool. But real quick, what if the ball is coming towards you? Well, it's the same end goal of having a standing leg in line, so you'll need to place it just before the ball has arrived, anticipating it being in line when your striking leg comes through. Okay, back to traveling with the ball. So now onto the fun stuff. We've got the standing leg sorted and it's time for the kicking leg. And it's important to know that I don't want you to change your current technique. Whether it's a driven shot, a curling shot, or some weird technique that you've developed, continue to do that for now. Don't overcomplicate things. So with that in mind, there are two adjustments that you're gonna to wanna to make. The first is perhaps the most important, and that's the extension of the leg as you make contact. If you're struggling with power, then odds are you're not fully committing to the strike. In other words, you don't have a straight leg when making contact with the ball. Again, it doesn't matter the technique, as long as you're fully extending the leg, you're gonna generate enough power. Even if you have a short backswing like I do, it's not important. You can still generate more than enough power to unleash hard shots if you have a straight leg when you make contact with the ball. This is really the main key to powering your shots. The other is what's happening inside the boot. And again, regardless of the technique, make sure that your foot is rigid. How you do this is by tightening all of the muscles in your body. And what that looks like in your boot is your toes pressing down into the sole of your boot. Kind of like a boxer would in their gloves to have the most hard and impactful punch. You'll want to have a tight fist to leave a lasting impression. Same thing with the foot. Tighten your toes and the rest will follow. So now we've addressed the power concerns, now let's look at improving the height and accuracy. This will depend on your preferred technique, but if you're curling the ball, you'll want to lean back slightly, opening up your posture to generate more lift, connecting with the lower portion of the ball using the instep of your boot. If you prefer more of a driven shot, it's a good idea to get your posture and momentum leaning forwards. Not too much where you fall over after each kick, but not too little where you sky it from the newfound power you've drawn from within. <laughs> Connecting with the very center of the ball, using the hard bone area of your foot for the most power and accuracy, remembering to push the toes down into the sole of the boot. Lastly, to ensure you completed an effective strike on goal, what happens after the ball has released your foot is just as important. Regardless of your technique, the goal to score a goal is to try and get the shooting leg back down to the ground as soon as possible. Transferring your weight onto the shooting leg, and there we are. Now, although we haven't talked much about the nitty gritty of the different ways to strike the ball, just adding these simple concepts to your already established technique, you'll start to build consistency through your striking ability. Once you've established these patterns in your body, that's when you can start to iron out some of the technical components of your strike. And while shooting is important, often the biggest hurdle is finding the space on the field in the first place to get a shot off on goal. So with that in mind, this video is gonna help you build the awareness you're gonna need 
to exploit the space in the pockets and showcase your newfound power and accurate strike.